Hi, this is Daisy, Technical Product Manager for IX Network. In this session, I will demo how to config eVPN VXLAN. You can see I already have two ports added to my session, which are connected back to back. eVPN VXLAN is implemented in NextGen framework. To start the configuration, we go to the scenario first. I already added some configuration on the other side of the back-to-back -back part, and I will show you the workflow to config on one side. Let's first start with a new topology add part. Here, uh, I want to config a P and a PE type of topology. So uh, in data center, typically spine switch running as an IP underlay is in the P router row, and the leaf or top of rack switch are in the PE router row. So they have the uh, VTAP functionality. So because it's IP underlay, so I need some uh, basic uh, uh, routing protocol IDP uh, not any MPRS protocol. So I'm going to pick the OSPF here. I only need a one P router just for demonstration purpose. Let me name it so it's easier to understand. So I need to config my IP to match with the configuration on the other side. Same thing for the gateway. Uh, for OSPF, because I'm running in back-to-back, -back, so I need to change the network type to be point-to-point. -point. And I think that's pretty much on the IDP side. Now, I need to add a cloud with the IP address pool. Here, uh, I config the P loopback address. So. IDP can advertise the PE loopback and the DOT know how to reach the PE. So let me use this. And then the prefix will be 32 and the address count. So I want to configure a uh, two PE here. So OSPF, I don't need to change anything. The OSPF will advertise this two address as a reachability. So now let me config the uh, PE device group. So you can see under data center Ethernet, there's the option eVPN uh, VXLAN. So let me select it. So the stack are automatically added with BGP and the EVI. So I only want a two PE here. And uh, I want to configure the router ID to be same as loopback, so it, it's easy for troubleshooting. So now let's configure the loopback to be the same as what we configured in the cloud. So now to configure eVPN, and the workflow is actually pretty uh, straightforward. So let's start with the uh, BTP peer configuration. Here, of course, you need to config a basic BTP information. On the DUT, let's say two down, uh, no, on the other side, I have one down, one down, one down, one. So I need to configure the DUT IP here. And then I need to config the BTP type and the local AS. I use IBTP here. And let's say the AS number is 100. So now for the eVPN, when you add the eVPN stack, the capability of the eVPN is automatically enabled. So you don't need to change it. Just double check, make sure this is enabled. So one thing you need to enable here is the learn the route filter. So we need to enable eVPN filter. Uh, to generate traffic, we need to learn the information. So this is mandatory, you know, when we run the control plan and then we need to generate traffic. So under the eVPN subtab, you can see some configuration parameter here. So first, you config start with number of Ethernet segment. So for single home, the uh, PE, this one you can just leave as default. So for multi-home, the PE, if you have multiple Ethernet segment, you might want to change this value. 
and uh, the operation mode. So this is for the uh, intercept forwarding. So intercept forwarding can have symmetric or asymmetric mode. Based on the different mode, uh, traffic generation needs to encode the inner uh, Ethernet header properly. So this is used for that purpose. And the uh, router MAC, this is to advertise the PE or the VTAP MAC address. And uh, this is used for symmetric mode. So this is pretty much for the configuration under BTP peer. Now let's move to the Ethernet segment. Here you have ESI type and ESI value. Uh, since I'm running a single home the PE, so I don't need to do anything because by default it's just zero. If you are running multi-home the uh, PE, you know multi-home to e multiple Ethernet segment, you need to change the uh, you know you select ESI type and then config a ESI value here. Now, for number of EVI, I want to configure two EVI here. So I have a 1P router, 2PE router, and the two EVI. Let me also name this, um, which is also a VTAB in the data center case. OK, so now I finish number of EVI. There are some other parameters available here for the single home, the uh, PE do not need this option. I disable it. And also, um, if you do not want to see the, uh, the Ethernet AD route, you can disable this fast conversions because I'm running single home, so I don't need this. Now, inclusive multicast route, I, I do need a multicast tray for the bound traffic, so I keep it enabled. And then there are some other advanced parameter if you want, uh, uh, you know, some specific uh, requirement. Otherwise, just leave all of them as default. So BTP BMAC uh, mapped IP. This is for the uh, PBB EVPN. So I'm running EVPN VXLAN. So this is not relevant. Now let's move to the EVI configuration. So as you remember, we configured the two EVI. So now here you can say I have a two PE and a two EVI. So I have four row here, and then this ESI type and the ESI value are grayed out. It's just for the identification purpose. So what I need to config here first for is number of broadcast domain. So if you're running a VLAN bundled service or VLAN bun aware bundled service, then it, you may have more than one broadcast domain per EVI. So in this case, you need to change this value. So for this demo, I'm running single home VLAN-based uh, service interface. So there's one-to-one -one mapping between the VLAN or the VNI to EVI. So I have a one EVI, only have one uh, VNI, one broadcast domain, so I leave it as default. And then we need to config ID EVI value. So for this one, this is per PE, so you can actually uh, restart the value used for each PE. Let me just do that. Uh, I only have two EVI here, so each PE you can see I have one two and the one two here. Another thing you need to uh, uh, pay attention is enable L3 VNI target list. So if you only want to run layer 2 VPN type of service, you don't need this. But if you want to run layer 3 uh, VPN service in addition to the layer 2 VPN service, then you need to enable L3 VNI target. We have another option, advertise L3 VNI separately. So this is for the requirement of some specific implementation. Uh, without enable it, we will send one type to MAC IP advertisement route, including all uh, MAC and IP information. For some implementation, they require two separate type to route for the same MAC. So one is advertise MAC only, they use to import in the MAC worth, and another will advertise the same MAC with its mapped IP address. So they use that to import to the layer 3 uh, IP worth. So I leave uh, as unchecked for now. So if you do need it, you know there's option here. So next thing we need to config is like a PMSI. So this is for the bound traffic. 
At this time, we only support ingress replication. For eVPN VXLAN case, it is also possible to build multicast tree use, uh, let's say, PIM SM. Um, we are looking to implement that in the later release. And uh, I will configure the upstream assigned MPS label here, just do an increment, let's say 16. So that's pretty much. Now, next thing you need to config, which are very important here, is the export and the import route target. So the first one is for the uh, layer 2 VPN service. It's layer 2, uh, you know, for the VXLAN case, it's mapped to the layer 2 VNI. And I will keep default as uh, Route the export route target type is AS type. I have AS100. So I would like to configure the assigned number here. So typically, people use an um, L2 VNI as the assigned number. So it's easy to manage and uh, troubleshooting. So let me use L2 VNI value 10001. And I have only two EVI per PE. So settings as two. Here you can see I have a uh, thousand one and thousand two for the first PE, and then the second PE is also thousand one and thousand two. So the first EVI of each PE, they are actually um, belong to the same uh, subnet, the broadcast domain. You can also optionally change a uh, number of IT if you have more than one IT in your export list. So for the import route target, they typically are same as export route target. So you do have all the option to config it, but uh, for, for now, I just enable this to be same as export target. Now, next one is to config a layer three target, route target. This is used for the IP worth. So same again here, I only config the uh, assigned number. So this in the VXLAN case will be a layer three VNI. So I have two um, EVI, both EVI, I want them mapped to the same um, L3, so same IP worth, it's the same tenant. So I will have the same L3 VNI value, let's say 5,000 here. Okay, and uh, for the export, I just simply make the same uh, import for the same as uh, export. So that's the major configuration task under EVI. And of course, we have other advanced parameter if you want to change. So now let's look at the broadcast domain configuration here. So you can see by default, the number of MAC pool are one. So even though you change this value, it's not going to help. To config number of MAC pool, which is the C range, C MAC range, you need to do from here, add a cloud. So I want CMAC to have the uh, both IP and the uh, MAC information, which the host I'm simulating here. So I simulate, I select the both IP and the MAC. So let me move this a little bit. Okay. So now, after after we add the MAC, let's look at the broadcast domain again. So you can see number of MAC pool now is one. So if you want to change the multiplier here, which is blocked, you can change from here. Let's see if you see uh, two here. So you can see a warning, operation not permitted. So to change this, you need to change from the grid, let's say two. So now you can see uh, the change. I have eight uh, hosts with IP and the MAC here, the range. So it's because I have one P and uh, two PE and uh, with two EVI, so that's four. Now I have a uh, two MAC range per uh, PE and per EVI, so that's eight. Now let me just leave as one for my demo purpose. And because I'm running VLAN uh, based uh, service interface, there's only one broadcast domain, so I don't need to configure Ethernet tag here. If you have more than one broadcast domain per EVI, you need to configure the Ethernet tag. I leave all the other as default. Now no, let's look at the, uh, the MAC range here. First under MAC pool, and I have one C MAC range per EVI per PE, so I have a total four row here. 
by default, I have one MAC address in this range. So this is actually a range, not a single MAC address. I can change it saying five count. So you can say zero one here, and the last is zero five. So now with this one range, I have five MACs. You can enable the VLAN if you need. Let's look at the IP address here. So let me config uh, 201 here. So to match the other side. So the MAC address are automatically derived from the, the MAC pool, the count per MAC range. Uh, I have five there, so I have five here. So in this release, we support a uh, one-to-one -one mapping. So there's only one IP per MAC. And in the later release, we, we will relax this restriction. So if you have an advanced use case which require multiple IP for the same Mac, you can do so. So for now, it's one-to-one. -one. Now you have the IP here. Because I'm emulating many hosts, so the, uh, the prefix length is 32 for the host address. Now let's look at the BTP CMAC property. So you have this grid out field uh, as identification for your configuration. And then you have advanced option with a sticky flag. This is for Mac mobility. And the sequence number, same thing for Mac mobility. You can also enable default uh, gateway extended community here. Now, here you can see advertise IPv4 address checkbox. By default, it's enabled because you add the IP address and the MAC address. So we will advertise both MAC and IP in the type 2 route by default. Now, if you do not want to advertise IP, so we do give you option to disable this checkbox. So even you have IP added, you only advertise MAC address to the, uh, in the type 2 routes. Same thing for the IPv6. You also see a parameter for the prefix length for both v4 and v6. So this is used to determine the uh, for the traffic generation whether uh, the source destination are belong to the same subnet or different subnet. So for the inter subnet traffic, we need to encode the traffic properly. So that is used for that purpose. So. Important thing you must config under the BTP CMAC property is in the label space. For the MPRS data plan, this is the label to identify the uh, the MAC and the, also the IP information. Now, in VXLAN case, you need to encode a VNI in this field. So the first label will be used for L2 VNI. So I will need to config the VNI information. Here, remember I use this as L2 VNI when I do the uh, raw target configuration. So you can see here I have the L2 VNI configured in the first label field. Now the second label field, the L3 VNI will be configured in this field. So I have only one IP worth, one tenant. So same L3 VNI value. So this is an important configuration you have to do. And again, we have other advanced parameter here. So that's pretty much finished the configuration workflow. And you know, there are, there are indeed a lot of manual configuration here because we don't have a protocol visor at this time. And uh, once we have the protocol visor, so all this configuration will be easier. You just need to put a VNI value and the label and the route target, everything will be configured automatically. For now, uh, you need to follow this sequence. It's, it's, pretty, it's still pretty straightforward. You start with P router, add the PE loopback, and configure the PE with all the uh, BTP, VPN information, and then you add the host behind the PE. So that's the workflow, and the other side are already configured. Now, let me enable the capture, start capture, before I start the protocol, so I can show you some eVPN message encapsulation. Start the protocol. OK, so you can see uh, P router, P router, all the session turn green, and everything looks good. And the quick view under the protocol summary, we have a BTP peer 
four session because I have a back to back both sides. Each side has two BTP session, and then the OSPF, which is the P session. So we have standard uh, BTP protocol stats uh, at per session or per device group per port level. So you can see all the sessions are in established state, and these are all the standard uh, TX RX protocol message counter which is used, you know, if you can do the troubleshooting or the others. And for the eVPN related information, so that is, you can see it from learned information. Remember, we enabled the learned route filter. When you right click on a BTP session, you have get eVPN learned information. Here you can see all the, the routes we learned from the remote site. The eVPN MAC, this is type 2 routes, the remote side MAC address, I have 10 for this peer. And then you can see the IP information and the ESI next hop remote peer MAC address. And then you can also see the encapsulation, which are negotiated as VXLAN. And then you can see the Ampere's label information. For the VXLAN data plan, this is the uh, VNI information. Now, this is type 2 routes. So we also have a type 3 uh, inclusive multicast routes. You can see we learned the information here. Now for the Ethernet segment, which is type 4 routes, I don't have it because I'm running single, uh, single home Ethernet segment. And I also disabled uh, fast conversions during configuration, so I don't have an Ethernet segment auto discovery route. So eVPN IP prefix is a, a type 5 routes, which we didn't implement yet in this RT2 release. So we will implement that in the next immediate release. So that's the learned information. Now let's move on to traffic. Now let's configure the traffic and from the topology one. So this is the CMAC range. So you can see I have four CMAC range here, and each PE has two. And then on the other side, I select the other CMAC range on the other side. So now you can see again the four range, so each PE has two. So you notice they all belong to 201 uh, subnet. So I did one-to-one -one mapping, so the traffic from the uh, source to destination will belong to the same subnet. Let me name this one as intro subnet traffic. Okay. So leave all the others as default. Let me go to the flow tracking. And uh, I'm going to track based on source destination value pair and also the VNI. Now, in the protocol behavior, there's one option related to the eVPN, which are the ordinal value. So this is used to generate unicast traffic if uh, the remote side has multiple PE uh, on the same Ethernet segment. So for X network, we cannot automatically generate load balance traffic, which means I cannot generate a traffic uh, load balance sent to the first PE, then the second PE, then the third PE at the remote side. So what we can do here is we pick one PE from the multiple PE in the same uh, Ethernet segment, and then we generate uh, one traffic item. That is to one PE only. And then we can generate a multiple uh, traffic item, and you can change the ordinal value. So we will pick each PE, and then we can start the traffic to simulate a kind of load balance. So we don't have that automatically. Of course, with this simulation, you know, if there are one PE, uh, failed to connect to the Ethernet segment, we cannot automatically, uh, you know, redistribute. So I leave at zero, so this will be picked the first PE. So far, I'm actually running single home. This doesn't really matter. And uh, preview, just quickly. So you can see generated traffic here. So finish. So I want to show you the traffic in the flow group view with the encapsulation. It's easier to understand here. Uh, 
So you can see uh, this is a VXLAN data plan. So the traffic generated here is uh, VXLAN encapsulated traffic. So at the author, you have Ethernet IP and the UDP and then VXLAN. So let's look at the VXLAN header. The VNI here, you can see this 1001, which is the L2 VNI we used. Because this is a intro subnet traffic, so L2 VNI is used to encode the VXLAN header. Now, if you look at the uh, inner Ethernet, this is from the uh, source is A0. This is the uh, host MAC address. And the other side the host MAC is B0. So these are the host MAC on the both sides directly. And the same thing for the IP. So you send from the uh, 201, uh, 1.0.1 and to 201.1. 1.0.101, so same for the others. This is the uh, intro uh, subnet traffic. So now let me show you the uh, inter subnet also. I want to add a traffic item. So this time, instead of I select everything, so I'm going to pick the First uh, EVI for the first PE, 200, uh, 201.1.0.1 for this range. This range has a 5 MAC address. So now on the destination side, I will pick the uh, first, um, the second VNI. So this IP will be 201.2.0.101 on the other side. So only one here. This is a 5 MAC again. So now you can see they are belong to different subnet. Let's look at what the traffic look like. So let me do the same thing here. Track by source destination value pair and the VNI. And uh, oh no, we don't need a preview. Just finish directly. Remember, uh, I leave the operation mode as a symmetric which are the default mode. So we can look at the traffic item here. Oh, let me rename this as inter subnet traffic. OK, so let's look at the encoding here. Again, it's a VXLAN encapsulated. So now if you look at the VNI in the VXLAN header, it is 5,000. Uh, this is the R3 VNI because this is an inter-subnet uh, traffic. It's a routing, so it goes through the IP wolf. So that's why the layer 3 VNI is encoded here. Now if you look at the inner Ethernet header, so your source and destination is not the host address. You can see this is actually the, uh, the PE MAC address. So the destination is the remote uh, PE MAC address, the, the router MAC, which advertised through the control plan, uh, along with the type 2 routes. So this is for the asymmetric configuration. Of course, the IP will be the host address. So this is similar. You can see they belong to a different subnet. So this is for the symmetric mode. Now, for the asymmetric mode, there are some changes in the uh, traffic encoding. So let me show you what it look like. FTP. So I need the, uh, uh, this cannot be changed on the fly. So let me stop the traffic and then change this to asymmetric mode. Okay, let me start it again. So what is asymmetric mode? So on the uh, local P, local P is doing a uh, routing and the bridging, so it goes through both MAC wolf and IP wolf. But on the remote P, it will do the bridging directly. So it only goes through the MAC wolf, not IP wolf. So in this situation, for the traffic generation, you need to encode the remote host directly because it doesn't go through the uh, layer three. So let's look at this uh, inter-subnet uh, traffic. 
we did early, so we already changed to the asymmetric mode. I'm just going to regenerate the traffic item. So now let's look at the encapsulation. If you look at the VXLAN header, now you see the VNI are changed to a layer 2 VNI because the remote side will use this VNI to identify the MAC wolf and then we do the bridging directly. Now for the inner Ethernet header, you can see the source is not changed, but the destination is changed to the remote host MAC address. So that's the difference between the symmetric and the asymmetric. Uh, okay, so I think I did do the capture and I want to show you the capture here. Just to show you one example on the EVPN route. Say open, let's say pick update message. See what we have here. Okay, so this you can see uh, this is a type two routes. So you can see the layer two VPN address family and the subsequent family is eVPN. And uh, the NLRR information, this is MAC advertisement routes. So this is type two. And you can see the route distinguisher and the ESI value is zero because I'm running single home. And then you can see the MAC information here and the IP information. And you can also see the VNI and the layer 2 VNI is 1001 and the layer 3 VNI is 5000. So same for the other routes. So you can also see we implemented the dissector for the Wireshark to decode this property as VNI. So this is a typical uh, type 2 routes. You can also see the extended community here. So first of all, it carried the route target for both layer two and layer three. And you also have a uh, encapsulation extended community negotiated for VXLAN. And uh, we also have a router Mac extended community when we run in the symmetric mode. So that's a quick view on the packet encapsulation. Uh, one more thing I want to mention for the traffic here is the traffic tagging. So we do support the traffic tagging for the eVPN. And if you recall, we introduced traffic tagging in the NGPF for all the VPN service like Air2 VPN, Air3 VPN. It is used to provide a more control on the to the traffic mesh to enable the traffic tagging. So that is implemented under the the uh, CMAC range. So you can see once you are under MAC pool grid. And then the top ribbon has this add tag option available. So you can simply add a tag here. Let's say if I want to do this tag similar as the uh, VNI, so I can use this two sequence here. So now you can see the tag is one, two, and then the second PE one, two. So this is tag, tag name. So tag name and ID have to be uh, same on the both source and the destination side for them to be able to generate the traffic. So we have a early TOR session on the traffic tagging and you can refer that on how to use it. Um, I think that's all I want to show and I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching.